good everybody today's video topic is so important we have been brushing this topic off for far too long we are finally going to be talking about how to detangle different types of hair the best methods to detangle and my favorite go-to tools for brushing out and styling all hair types depending on the look that you're going for now for anyone new here if you don't know who i am i am your main girl mel i'm a hairstylist and textured hair specialist and i'm here to teach you better ways to take care of your hair and while you might think that this video is pretty basic it's a very important topic because so many people get it wrong. A lot of people are causing damage to the hair while they're brushing it out. They're not using the right methods for their hair type. And that's why we are going to go over all the different types of methods included in brushing your hair, such as dry detangling, wet detangling, wet curly styling with a brush, smoothing the hair out with a brush, and picking and teasing for volume. And for each of these methods, I'm going to share with you which hair types can be using it, the benefits, the bewares, aka don't do it, my favorite brushes to use to get the job done, and best tips with visual tutorials. Oh, and if you're really just interested in a certain topic, down in the description box below, we will put the timestamps so you can look into whichever method you want. But stay tuned to the end where I'm going to show you how to actually clean your brushes and give my final thoughts. And without further ado, let's brush into it. That's not, but actually it's not. Don't do that. Welcome to Detangling 101. We're gonna first get into dry detangling and then wet detangling. Dry detangling is best done on hair types that are straighter to wavier and can be really beneficial for oily scalps. The best brushes to use for something like this is a simple paddle brush and or if you have an oily scalp, using a brush with natural bristles like a boar bristle brush is really soft and gentle on the hair and it is also really beneficial if you have an oily scalp because it will help to distribute the oils from the top of your head through the lengths of your hair. This is not only stimulating for your scalp, but it will also help with exfoliation if your scalp is flaky. And it is also especially gentle for fine hair types. However, when detangling thicker and coarser hair types, going with a paddle brush that has firmer bristles will help to detangle dry hair much easier. Now just a few detangling tips and a rule of thumb for any time you're brushing out the hair, you always want to start at the ends and work your way up. Then once the hair is tangle free and you can get the brush through it freely, you may brush from scalp to ends. Scalp to ends, scalp to ends, and oh, oh, how I envy you. I wish I could do this when my hair was dry, but I can't. Beware, beware. If you have low elasticity hair, or in other words, if your hair is dry and brittle, don't even do this method because brushing dry hair when it is dry will result in breakage. For drier hair types and tighter textures, there are different methods for you to use. Alternatives like the pre-poo. Pre-pooing your hair is very key for tight textures, any matted hair, so that you can get a lot of the job done now and make your life a lot easier for by the time you get in the shower, you won't be spending as much time in there. A pre-poo is basically treating your hair before you wash it. So you're putting product on your hair, which is gonna help to soften it, condition it, make it much easier to detangle, which can help to prepare and repair your hair before you go ahead and start washing and detangling. So by putting a product on, usually you're going in with a product that is heavy in emollients that's gonna help to give it some slip to lubricate the strands and help loosening up those knots. And this is something you can do anytime your hair needs a little extra love. For example, I had gone swimming, my hair was very knotted, and here I am today with my pre-poo treatment I currently have in an herbal hair mask that is rich in coconut oil. You can even do a DIY hot oil treatment using coconut oil or a blend of different oils that you prefer to help pre-soften and detangle your strands. And then of course there's Olaplex number three, the pre-shampoo treatment to strengthen your hair. No matter what you're putting on your hair, you wanna let it sink in and soak into your hair a little bit before you begin detangling so that it becomes ready. Now my hair is quite ready. I've had this in my hair for a few hours. I'm going to take it down from here and I'm going to show you how I start to detangle this. If you're really looking to help detangle, this paddle brush I find to be very gentle. It is the Tangle Tamer from Denman. The bristles are all very thin and made out of nylon. There's no balls at the end. They don't get caught in the hair and they're also very flexible. I find they'd be very good for fine hair or thick hair. Now the next method would be wet detangling, which in a nutshell is detangling your hair while it is wet. This can be both in the shower, out of the shower, with or without product. Now detangling hair while it is wet is also seen to be frowned upon, but it is actually good on most hair types. We'll get to why you wouldn't want to detangle on wet hair. But as with anything, it's all about what tools you're using. So you could really use a variety of different tools, Personally, some of my favorites and for my highly textured hair, I love using a wet brush. A wet brush is a brand that is known for brushing through your hair when it is wet. There's a lot of types of brushes that look the same. Most of the brushes are in a paddle brush type of form. The bristles are usually synthetic and they're also very flexible with a little ball point end. The little ball point on brushes is usually there to be gentle on the scalp 
One of the greatest things about this wet brush is see how the bristles are all in these clean rows. This is actually really beneficial for detangling. I'm also just obsessed with the shape of this brush. See how it's rounded and concave to the head. It's a massage every time you use it. And additionally, little side note, this brush can also be used to blow dry hair as it is heat resistant and the vents help the air to blow through. But if you like a brush without the little balls at the end because you feel like your hair gets caught in that, this Tangle Teaser brush works really well. The bristles are also placed in rows. They're quite flexible. They're ever so slightly thicker than the ones of the Tangle Tamer from the Denman brush. But this one is specifically marketed as a wet detangler and it is quite good. Compared to using a wide tooth comb that is quite rigid, you know, it has no flex. And in my experience, it is harder to detangle because it's not as flexible. It takes longer. And I also find that it hurts. Now, in complete contrast, there's this weird looking thing, which has actually been one of my favorite go-to tools to detangle with. But unlike the other brushes, it's not the bristles on this brush that are flexible. It's actually the whole body of the brush. So the bristles can get really strong into any knots, but the brush will flex and adjust if it does get caught. I find it to be really cool and I really like using it. And it is always good to use a brush when there's some sort of protecting product that is in the hair that is gonna help to support the elasticity and the strength of the hair. And as a tip, once again, we always wanna work from the ends and then work our way up to the scalp. So use a conditioner that's gonna provide a lot of slip and as a tip, if you have a serious knot, it's a really matted section of hair that you are losing hope in and you're ready to cut it off. Before you do that, try completely saturating your knot under running water or in a bowl because when that section is soaking, it will help to expand and loosen up the knot on its own without you having to tug and pull on it so aggressively. And see how after detangling, I'm twisting my hair up. This is a tip for hair that gets very tangled, whether that's fine hair, damaged hair, or tight coily textured hair. Once it's done detangling, either twist up sections or braid up sections to keep the hair detangled. But beware and don't do this on hair that is so damaged, there is hardly any cuticle and you are at a grade five porosity. In other words, your hair literally feels like mush and it is falling off with every touch and with any stroke of the brush, it is falling right off. When the hair becomes extremely damaged and feels so mush, Sometimes this can happen after excessive bleaching or after doing a chemical relaxer treatment. The hair strands will lack structure as a whole. So anytime you try to brush it, it's gonna be very damaging. But if the hair is strong, if the hair is treated with protein, which by the way, if your hair feels that way, it should be treated with protein products, then detangling while wet will be very good for you. Moving on. The next topic would be brush styling curly hair, which is literally using a brush to comb through your curls in order to define them. Who is this good for? Any texture of hair that has a wave pattern can do this to enhance their curl. Enhance, to enhance the curl, like enhance the A that I just put in there, the enhance, enhance, enhance the curl. First things first, the best tools to get this job done is by using a Denman brush. The benefits of using a brush like this is it helps to define textured hair to achieve clumped curls and smooth frizz. Wavy, curly, or coily, all textures can benefit from using the Denman brush styling. Now, one thing to note if you are styling your curls with a brush is that you can expect a little bit more shrinkage out of your style. And I know this can sound crazy. It's like, how is this making my hair curlier? Why is my hair jumping up even more? Because in most cases, that is what's, that's the case. That's exactly what's happening. And I like to use this analogy. I think we've all curled a ribbon with scissors, am I right? That tension that whip, that stretch and pull back, and that snap back, and that little curly whirly hoops. You know what I'm talking about? It's the same idea with our hair when we are using a brush. Take my section, always make sure it's detangled, and then in at the root, I like to apply pressure, and you can see how the curls clump together. This, good. This would be bad. This is not clumping the curls properly. You've gotta apply tension, which is nice because the Demon brushes are rounded so you can curl the brush a little bit and it helps the hair to wrap around the base you can see how that base is rounded and it is really nice and smooth and slippery for your hair to just glide right over so i'll show you again this time curling the brush it's definitely clumped better so if you follow me then you know that the denman d3 with all seven rows is my go-to brush for defining my curls i've used it a hundred thousand not that many i use it all the time in pretty much every one of my styling videos so if you wanna see what the results look like with this brush, there's lots of other videos to see. What I do wanna showcase in this video is the difference between a nine row Denman brush, this is the D4, it's a lot of rows, and the D3, but with rows removed. 
If you have thicker and coarser hair, you're gonna wanna use a brush with more bristles because you'll get more tension. So the D4 with nine bristles is great for that. But for my hair and most textures that I've used it on, the D3 with seven rows works incredibly. You could always take some rows out to be a little more gentle as this will lessen the tension so it will be less pulling on your hair. So if you have a sensitive scalp or more damaged hair, then take out some rows. Now one of my greatest tips when using a Denman brush to style is to work in sections. Anytime you're styling the hair, you've got to take it one section at a time. And when the goal is to define your natural curl, the section size that you take, it should be about the width of your curl. For example, most of my curls on average are about a finger width, and so that's the thickness of section that I take. This helps me get the most amount of definition, and so I'm not clumping too much hair together that I will have to later separate, which will cause more frizz and not the look I want. By taking smaller sections, you will clump less. By taking bigger sections, you're gonna clump a lot of hair together which can work in wavier hair. If you've got wavy hair, even taking a bigger brush like a paddle brush can work well to do this because you are taking a bigger section, a bigger brush will be able to hold all of that hair. And that way you get really nice, big, juicy clumps. And just a quick look at my Denman brush results. You can see the difference of the nine row Denman brush. My curls do look a little bit tighter, a little bit springier because they had more tension compared to the D3 with only four rows in, the curls look a little bit looser. And again, beware. This is not a detangling brush. The bristles are not as flexible as a detangling brush and it can hurt. It can really hurt if you get caught in a knot. So make sure your hair is detangled before you use it. Don't abuse it. Next up, we're gonna talk about smoothing brushes, which would be using a brush to smooth out your hair, to stretch it and remove kinks. We use a smoothing brush when we are looking to style and set the hair. And again, there are lots of different brushes that you can use when setting the hair, depending on the desired look you are going for. Brushes like paddle brushes, natural bristle brushes, and ceramic brushes that are usually round. Each of these brush types work by creating tension on the hair, which will stretch it out to remove the kinks and smooth down any type of frizz. Using any type of these brushes while you are blow drying your hair will help to prevent the need for using extremely hot heat tools because you're already working out a lot of the kinks while you are drying and a blow dryer is gonna be much less damaging than a flat iron or curling iron. And the key when using any one of these brushes, if you're really looking for a smooth result, is working in sections. You always wanna be sectioning the hair in order to get really in there, super thorough, so no strand gets left behind. And just a quick blow dry tip, anytime you are blow drying, you wanna start with the roots. Dry the roots first to push that water down to the ends. You wanna dry the roots to get them really nice and smooth first things First, also another round brush tip is you don't have to do it on soaking, soaking wet hair unless your hair is highly textured. If your hair is highly textured, you do wanna start on pretty wet hair that has product on it. But if your hair is more of a looser texture, wavy or straight, then the hair doesn't have to be soaking wet. You will be there for far too long trying to round brush it smooth. So rough dry it first, get it to like 80% dry and then go in and smooth. So beware and don't use a brush with heat if it is not meant to be used with heat. A ceramic brush, totally fine. Your natural bristle brushes, well, be careful if you're using high heat with your blow dryer, you could burn the bristles and then that's gonna affect the longevity of your brush, so turn down the heat. But don't be using a plastic brush that is not meant to be used with heat because it could melt in your hair. And one more tip when using a brush like this, it's not a detangling brush, so if you're going in to do a nice smooth round brush style, just keep in mind like this is not necessarily a gentle brush, there's gonna be a lot of tension, and so it could pull on your hair, and it could cause breakage if your hair is not thoroughly detangled and protected with a product on it beforehand. So protect your hair and detangle first, then go ahead with your smoothing brush. Also, because you might accidentally get one of these brushes stuck in your hair. And if you have never lived through that, then you are very lucky. I don't want you to live through that. You know, don't overachieve, okay? You can't use a lot of hair when you're doing this. You only want your section sizes to be the size of the diameter of the brush. You never wanna go overboard. Too much hair will get caught and stuck and it will be very scary to get out of your hair if you even can. Just beware of what you're doing to your hair. And if you are looking for big hair, for lots of stairs, then, this next segment is for you. I'm gonna show you how you can use a pick, a comb, or a brush to achieve big voluminous hair because the bigger the hair, the harder they stare. Mm, I haven't even picked my hair out. She's a fluffy one today. And we own that, okay? We own our big hair of all textures, of all colors, of all races. Like, hello, let's bring it back to the 60s and 70s when the natural hair community brought out their afros and it was the start of an era. Start of an era. 
But of course, if you are looking to achieve more volume in finer hair types or hair that doesn't grow that big, well, for curls and tight textured hair, you can never go wrong with a pick, of course. This pick is called the Spriggle, which is more spaced out, which is kind of cool. It's kind of like using your fingers, which you can also just use to pick out your hair or even a wide tooth comb. So you want to take your device, device? So you want to take your tool or your tool, whatever works for you. And you always want to take it into your root and lift in and lift in and lift in and lift. I'll fluff this whole side and I'm using my spriggle. I like the spriggle because it is quite gentle. Always pick, fluff, tease, whatever on dry hair. And again, notice how I'm only up here and not down here. I don't want to do that because I want to keep the definition of my curls. Now this method does not work for everybody. For looser textures and people that have straighter roots, picking out like this is only going to want to straighten out the roots even more because you are brushing them out. You want to reverse, reverse, and probably use a tool that has more teeth. You can use a pick or better yet, a comb. This one's cool. This one's from Denman. It actually has three rows but a regular one row comb can do just fine as well. Or you can use one of these brushes, which is a teasing comb. The smaller the sections and the more you do, the more volume you will have and it will also last longer. And instead of brushing outwards, you wanna tease it back. So you are back combing, taking the hair from maybe an inch or two away from the scalp and brushing it towards the scalp. You always wanna do this from the underneath of the hair. You are creating a tease in the hair. So beware, don't go too overboard. Make sure that you can brush it out later on and then make sure that you have a nice piece of hair to go over top of it to cover some of that back combing, but that will give you some great volume. And if you know you have very slippery hair or oily hair and you know it's gonna fall out on its own, then simply set it with some hairspray. Of course, only use those tips if you're looking for big hair. If not, that's totally fine, but always beware. If you're looking to maintain definition on the ends, stay away from the ends and focus on that root area. Now give me one moment, I'm gonna finish picking out this side and then we're gonna go over one more miscellaneous topic before we get into how to clean all of these tools. Stay tuned, one moment please. And lastly, this is kind of a miscellaneous topic, but I wanna give an honorable mention to some of my favorite brushes as well. If you've been following me, you know that this is a shampoo brush. This is something that I use in the shower while I am shampooing my hair and I love it, I truly love it. It gets in all the nooks and crannies and it just feels amazing on the scalp. If you have tired or lazy fingers and you can't really get in there, if you have thick hair, this is incredible. All of the prongs are made from silicone, they never get caught in the hair. And it also helps me to get the detangling process started even with the shampoo in because I can really work it through my hair with bristle type brushes. Sometimes it's advertised as an exfoliating brush. I wouldn't really say it exfoliates, but it does help to massage and distribute shampoo throughout your hair. So I love these brushes. Next, there is the edge comb. This would be a toothbrush looking brush at the tip and then a little mini comb that kind of looks like an eyebrow comb. These brushes are used to style the baby hairs. If you're looking to tame and lay any little frizzies and any little hairs around your forehead, it's really cool because it can be used to create really fun designs in the hair or just to smooth back any little nooks and crannies. Styling your edges is an art form and it's something that's been done for a very long time on black and tight textured hair and it just blows me away the designs they can create. Just stunning. Now if you have really tight textured hair and you actually found a good edge control, please let everybody know down below. I personally don't really style my edges that much. I don't really create a lot of designs. I don't like putting product on my scalp really. So if I do decide to lay anything down, I just wet the brush with water and give it a little, a little smoothing, a little smoothing, but that's it. And I think lastly, I don't think I'm forgetting anything, but if you ever want to create really clean sections in the hair, Use a tail comb, a comb with the tail, it doesn't have to be this one. This is a random one I found. I can't find my others right now, but this will create the smoothest, cleanest sections in the hair anytime you're trying to part your hair. And lastly, we're gonna talk about how to actually clean all of these tools and brushes so you can keep them not gross. Let's clean our brushes. How often you ask? Well, if you're a hairstylist or you're sharing a brush, you should definitely be cleaning it every time it's being used until it goes on to the next person. And I'm not just talking about taking out the hair, it should always be sprayed down with alcohol, 70 and higher. And to keep your brushes free of any hair, you can always use another brush or comb to take out the hair in between the bristles that may be hard to reach with your fingers. Some brushes like the Denman D3 and the D9 are really cool because they actually completely dissemble. You can pull them apart completely. 
open them up, take out the pins, and this will help you get a really thorough clean. If you are using a brush with a lot of product in your hair, just make sure to give it a good rinse at the end of every use to make sure that no product dries and then gets really gunky on the brush, because that's when it gets nasty. And after quite a few uses, simply fill a sink with warm water. You can add a little bit of shampoo, you can add a little bit of dish soap, and just swish and swirl your brushes around, let them soak for an hour or so, and when you're all done, give them a rinse and let them dry. You might only want to do this once a month or so, but you know, at least once a year. And one final note, when you are storing your brushes, just make sure that they're not being squished because this will deform the bristles and then the brush just won't be as, as fresh. You're just, you're wearing and tearing at the brush quicker than it needs to be. And in conclusion, wow, wait, we went over a lot, I'm sweating. I think we can all agree that one valuable lesson that this video has taught us is that no brush is one size fits all. And so I hope this video helped you better understand your tools and how to use them. And if this video made you feel like you have some shopping to do, I will link all of my favorite brushes that I mentioned in this video and that I love in the description box below so you can check them out there. And while you are down there, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Comment below what other videos you'd like to see and make sure you're subscribed so you can see them. And please send this video and message to someone that may need to hear it. You can brush curly hair. You can brush hair while it is wet. Brushing hair is okay as long as you're doing it correctly. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Until next week, this is your main girl Mel, and I am out. Peace. We're ready. But is my hair ready? I think it looks better on camera. What's good everybody and welcome to today's video topic. This is so important and it's fine to tell you it does have a... Okay Amanda, what do I say? What's good everybody and welcome to today's video. Welcome to this video. Not just today, welcome any day. To okay, she, Amanda said to do it one more time. Does that mean I was shit? Oh, okay. Yeah, it was better. It was a little more concise. Yeah, very good. Okay. She said I did a good job. The tingle ling 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 The tingle ling ling Can you stick with my hair? Yeah. Maybe? Okay. okay. All right. Oh, that's so satisfying. Any more color on this hand? I'm overwhelmed. I just, I know it's gonna get caught in my hair. It will look frizzy. If it's frizzy when it's wet, it will be frizzy when it's dry. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. Flip the side. My hair. My face. How's it look? Really good. No, it looked like confused, like. Yeah. Okay. Okay, wait, I wanna see some. Fucking arms are so long. Uh, can you keep them organized, please? I don't know what that means. Alright, now before we get into. Okay. <clears throat> I'm warming my voice up. Fetch me a bottle. I'm sweating. I need a fan. Oh my god, a Beyonce fan would have been amazing. Oh, the single lens. Oh, the single lens. I'm sweating and my mustache is showing. Really? What are you doing right now? You're Swiffer dusting at a time like this? Yes. I thought you were taking a nap. You want to get a nap? You wanted to. I always want to, but I don't. I think if we all napped once a day, the world would be a more peaceful place. <laughs> Shit. No. This is cool. This was not sponsored. <laughs> I just want to see you smile. It makes me. I just want to see you cry, it makes me smile. <clears throat> I've dried my pits, now I'm fine. Dry detangling is best done on hair types that are straightier, straightier. They, they gotta be a little straightier. Uh, this is when I'm done, this is when I'm done. I'm done. I'm done.